Welcome back to my show. <laughs> um, good stop there. You really okay. stopped on time. Okay. We are back with part two of Alicia's story. Now, this is a very powerful episode. In part two, we dive a lot deeper into uh, the relationship between Alicia and her mom and how it went from some real hardship blossoming into a strong, deep connection between the two and how Alicia's mom as Alicia say, <laughs> becomes her superhero. And Alicia talks to us about the lessons she's learned from the adversity that she has faced. So you don't want to miss it. I'm so grateful for everybody who has followed us along on Alicia's journey. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you know when new videos are coming out because there is a lot more impactful videos or share this with your friends if it can help someone that is struggling share it with them. In this episode, I do want to say, please read the disclaimer. We do talk about some very deep, heavy subjects, so just be ready for that. All right, let's dive in. Sorry, I'm itching. I have like so many itches right now. Pause, pause, yeah. pause, 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 pause. Okay, because <laughs> Finn tells me every single time I itch my nose on camera, he catches it. So. <laughs> <laughs> and how did you fix it with your mom? So flash forward, our relationship is just deteriorating. My mental health, bad. She set up like counseling for me. She was like, I'm gonna have like a suicidal daughter if I don't do something about this. I had my first appointment like booked and that day I was like, no, like I had already gone to so many counselors in my life. I was like, I'm done. I was yeah. like, I don't want to do this anymore. And that was like the day I was like, I'm not gonna make it to this appointment. Like I was like, I'm not gonna make it to anything else again. So I started to like attempt. Mm -hmm. um, and then I realized my mom was coming home and she was gonna like drive by where I was like, I wanna do this. So I decided to put it on pause and go to, just go to the appointment. But I was like- Good for you. Thank you. That's really good. But yes, thank you. It's very strong. My fear was of like my mom finding me so yeah. I didn't stop out of strength in the moment I stopped out of like fear we went to this appointment I was like sitting down with the counselors and like the psychiatrist I was very high so I was not there mentally and I was like a zombie did they know that you were high I don't know if they could tell if I that I was or they just thought that I was like so down yeah. that like I was a zombie like you had so much weight on you yeah yeah so they like sat me down and they they were asking me all these questions and I just wasn't answering, I wasn't answering at all. They like held my hand and crouched on the floor and was like, Alicia, do you want to kill yourself? And then I bawled. Like I completely like fell down and like sobbed. And yeah. then I was like, yes. And um, so, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna cry thinking and, about that again. Yeah. <laughs> and your mom was there? She wasn't in the room, no. Uh, so it was just like me and the psychiatrists. Yeah. Yeah, I like walked out and I pretended like nothing happened. We went, went in the car, but they told my mom. They basically told her to put me on watch. So she had it all set up with my dad that someone was always going to be home. She had to take my siblings to like dance class. I went home and I just like told my dad I was going for a nap and I tried to take my opportunity there. And yeah. And then I woke up probably an hour later. Ooh, my heart. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I woke up, I woke up like an hour later and um, just like threw up like so much. I tried to like run to the bathroom and I was like hitting the walls and I, I, I don't know. I got there. I don't remember how, but like I got there yeah. and my dad heard me like vomiting and he was yeah, he like came and was like knocking on the door and he was like, what's wrong? Are you okay? All this stuff. And I was like, still very lucid, like out of my brain. Yeah. I like looked at him and I just started crying and I was like, dad, like I did something really bad. And then he started crying and he didn't know what to do. And he called my mom and I didn't know what to do. Like I was just scared shitless and like very, very, very high. Yeah. Like I didn't know what to do. That's so scary. It was terrifying yeah. like 
biggest eye opener in my life to be yeah. honest so he called my mom and she was like call poison control like do this do this do this and as he was like calling poison control she called me and was like on the phone and she was like she was like do you trust me to get you through this night and I was like I was like yes and she was like do you trust me to help you through every step of this until you're okay and I was like yes <laughs> So. Ugh, my eyes are watering. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, so poison control was like, well, since she threw up this much and took this much and blah, 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 she should be okay. Watch her. Um, and you have two options, basically. You can do the watch or you can, like, admit her to the psych ward. And I was like, Gags. So then I pretty much begged my mom to admit me to the psych ward because I didn't want mm. my family to see me yeah. like that. Like, for the next three days, I was probably still, like, high. And every time one of my family members looked at me, they just, like, I saw their tears, like, in their eyes. And I was like, I don't want this. I don't trust myself. Like, I, like, basically begged her. And she was like, if you don't trust yourself, like, do you trust me? And that was kind of it. We pushed two couches together. I lived in a square for, like, a month to two months or something with my mummy. Um, yeah, and then I went from the couch with my mom to the room with my sister, and then finally, like, a total of, like, four months later, maybe, we cleaned my room, and I was back in business. Wow. <laughs> Looking back on that experience, what, what are your reflections on it now? Well, honestly, suicide is no longer an option. I hope that it isn't for anybody. I just had, like, an epiphany one night. To me now, um, a suicide is, like... Yes, it, it's like loving yourself so much that you would die for you, but like having that kind of love for something or someone, like you need to be alive to fight for that. Like that is something worth fighting for. You're like, you're worth fighting for. When you feel that way, that you just wanted to stop, that is having so much empathy for yourself that like you would do anything to make the pain stop. But if you didn't care about yourself, like, you would just keep on walking around like a zombie, like you wouldn't care. You have empathy there. You have love for yourself. And that's something that you need to you need to work on. You need to live yeah. happily. Yeah. You need to work on understanding yourself better and loving yourself better. And yeah. knowing that as rough as the time is in that moment, there is light at the end of the tunnel and yeah. it will get better. Yeah. As hard as it is and like as long as it takes, it is work. But we all have it in us, so yeah. gotta find that. Yeah. Well, that was heavy. Thank you so much for sharing that with us and just being so open and vulnerable and being able to talk about it, first of all. I just want you to know that I love you. Thank I you. love you too. <laughs> <laughs> this whirlwind and storm happened to your family with what? Um, you put them through. Mm -hmm. It sounds like your your relationship with your mom changed from that point on. Yes. What was the next steps? How did it How did it improve and how did it change? Uh, so with my counseling, my mom was also a huge part of that. Like I think once a week, she also had um, her own appointment with my counselor, and it was basically like them chatting and like him also being a middle man kind of thing, mm -hmm. which sometimes you need honestly because. He's just like a middle man who has nothing to do, like no personal attachments to our family. And he's just hearing both sides of our stories. Yeah. And then we slowly started having conversations and through her own process, my mom found coming to terms with it. She found herself doing like research and trying to learn about it. I'm lucky enough to have like not had to take that responsibility of like being like, it's my job to like change your mind. Yeah. She did that herself and she through that work. Yeah, she did the work and through that process I healed through anything she had said or done before. Like her process of doing the work just healed my process of hurt. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. No, oh, she's an amazing lady. And Shout um, out to you, Mama. Shout out Mom. <laughs> and Dad, I love you too. Love you too, Dad. <laughs> Your mom now has started an LGBTQ group at the church, yes. right? Yes, she has. Talk to us about that. Well, yeah, so she has started this group with another of one of my best friends, Mom. Basically, it's to help educate people who have either loved ones or children or anybody they know who doesn't yeah. understand, like, 
of the LGBT community mm-hmm. and just kind of trying to educate them and that's educate great. herself at the same time. I think that's, first of all, so good because I think just even bringing education of the LGBTQ plus community with, into a church is massive yeah. and normalizing that and allowing people to be queer and religious is huge and the fact that your mom started that and fights for it and educates everyone is yeah. huge yeah no my mom straight up did a 180 thing? i think so think it's, it's either 360 or 180 well i think 360 would put her all the way back to where she was right because like well maybe she circle. can just do like a full circle of education and just be never mind yeah 180, <laughs> 180. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, she did a full 180. Like, she's gonna be scissor kicking and karate chopping anybody oh. who says anything. She went off on one man. Poor man. Yeah. The poor man didn't even know what he was getting himself into. <laughs> you messed with the wrong mama. With uh, everything that you've gone through with your mom and your relationship and everything. Yes. Have you had a moment to connect with her to just, I want to say, apologize or forgive? Um, yeah, no, definitely forgive, like, there is no hurt there anymore, like, my mom is just my superhero, she literally saved my life, Yeah. and we've just come so far from all of that, that it's just, it no longer exists to me, honestly, yeah. like, it's a story that I can tell and hopefully, like, educate other people. And have you had a moment to connect about just, like, everything that you, you, you two bit, went through? Um, I can't like tell you one exact conversation necessarily that I'm like, yes, this was when yeah. because it's just been such a process that like every day is a little bit more. Okay. And even if it's not the exact conversation of like, hey, you did this and yeah. I did this. Yeah. It's like very much everything has been spoken about and is in the air and like everything has been forgiven and understood to be more exact. Like, I feel like we just, we understand each other, nor we understand each other now. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's all a learning process. Good. I'm happy for you that you and your mom have worked through all of that and that you trusted her yes. with your life and you trusted her to do better. And I think that she's proven that in so many different ways. So shout out to you, mom. Yeah. Shout out. Big, big shout out. Big shout out. Reflecting on your past. Yes. What was one of the major lessons that you've learned? Um, that it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, like, huge. Yeah, it's something I still struggle with sometimes. Yeah. Because of my hard headedness, oh, it's okay to it's okay to ask for help. It's good too. I love that. I agree, hundred percent. Yes. I think everybody struggles with this, but know that there's always people out there that are willing to help you and want to help you. If you get a no, that's okay. There's so many more. Yeah. What is something that you would say to your younger self? What I would tell myself um, is that as long as it's positive and like it's gonna have a positive outcome, whatever you need to do in a moment to survive, like do it on a pod. Po- Why is that such a hard word? Unapologetically. Unapologetically. Okay. You can just say unapologetically, and I'll cut it unapologetically perfect Ding. yes i completely agree with you i think that we need to nurture ourselves we need yeah. to take care of ourselves and like we need to give ourselves that space and energy to do good for our body and not have to abide to what other people need or desire from us when you're going through hardship yes how do you take care of your mental health well i think that it's very important to talk to yourself gently yeah. Um, yeah, like I am learning to create every label, negative emotion I've felt, like create them into another person that I love. Yeah. Because like, what would you say to someone you love who is feeling the way that you're feeling? Like you wouldn't bad talk them. You wouldn't make them no. feel worse. You would try to bring them up and you'd be kind and, yeah. and gentle and you'd love them. I love that. I think it's so powerful. We need to, we do this to our friends. We big up our friends. We talk so highly of them or our family. And we have such negative thoughts about ourselves. And it's like, why treat ourselves like that? Well, this is the vessel that we have in our life to take us to where we need to, to just take us through life, you know? And it's like, we need to 
take care of our mental state and tell ourselves that we love you. we love them. Affirmations are so strong. Like if you wake up in the morning and you tell yourself, you are a beautiful, sexy motherfucker. It'll work, trust me. Your day will be amazing. It's a good way to go. I love yeah. that. Yeah. What is your favorite quote? Um, my favorite quote is, it is now as it was then, okay to laugh. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's Shane Quixen. I actually love that. That's so sweet. Yeah, no, I really like it. I was it. like, you got a lot of quotes. I was like, I wonder yeah. if she's going to use a body quote. Well, I could say <laughs> that. This one. This is my favorite quote. <laughs> yeah. What do you think of the next steps for inclusion in the LGBTQ plus community? Honestly, like, things like this. Like, this is a purpose. purpose. I'm hungry, Finley. <laughs> Get her a cookie. Honestly, things like this. Like, yeah. this is a perfect example of like shutting up and just listening to someone else yeah. <laughs> you know i think that that's super important in day-to-day -day basis like putting your perspective on the shelf and just like hearing somebody else like actually listening to what they say and what they've and, gone through yeah no so like regardless i think that it's super important for the lgbt community but just in general for anybody to understand anybody with a difference from themselves shut up and listen did you hear her did you hear me obviously you're in a really great place now yes. how's life for you now well the best thing about georgia is <laughs> listen up i know you're watching i know you're watching <laughs> um <clears throat> Yeah, no, life is, life is great. Life is, life is good. That's it? We done? <laughs> I love her. And uh, it introduced me to you. Yeah, that's true. Well. Lucky so, you. <laughs> I'm feeling good. Yeah. Great. Well, with that, you know, um, is there one last message that you want to say to anybody that's watching? Like, comment, and subscribe. Wow! <laughs> Love it! Yes! Yes! That hurts. Also, just like, take care of yourself. Everybody's going through it, especially right now. Mm -hmm. So, I know that it's hard, but I love you. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs>so much for coming on here for sharing your story for being so brave and open and honorable and I'm so grateful that you have found yourself to a healthy place and that you're dating my sister and you're part of our little family not yet they're not married but um <laughs> they have their own little dog and <laughs> yeah, they're like well look at my ring <laughs> um I'm engaged <laughs> um no but thank you so much for coming on here. I really love you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Giving me a chance at the spotlight. And she just looks fabulous. Ciao for now.